Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 22 here in the pristine, untouched wilderness of the Calm Lands. Every little bit would help, I suppose. Uh, 8,800 litres of food. So, I mean, we are starting to run a little bit low on food. And this is going to be the only kind of kicker for it, is whether or not we can provide enough food for getting more pigs than we've got right now. So you can see right there, I I happen to know that the price of the pigs, they go up to 512. It's always 512. So we'll sell nine pigs for 512. Right now, I want to buy nine. Um, then buy nine, 2070. There, and I've now got 81 pigs. So those right there, they sell for 3,330. Uh, no, these. 3,750. And I'll go up to 512 for tomorrow. So there isn't anything else I want to do here. I've got 8,800 in there. I've got 4,000 liters of food in there. We are going to need to buy food for the chickens pretty soon. That's getting closer and closer. Uh, the other thing that I want to do right here is I'm going to go in. I'm going to turn this one off. So I'm going to deactivate that one. And I'm going to deactivate that one. The corn pig food is the one that we're doing, isn't it? Uh, corn, sugar beet, canola, barley. Yes. And it's the barley is the kicker on there as to whether or not we can stretch that any further. We don't grow barley in there. Or in here. Mm. Uh, there isn't really anything else we want to do today, apart from we'll speed time along a little bit so that we can just get the last few eggs on this pallet, and then I'll skip the night after this. There we go. That one can be moved out of the way and dropped down there, and then we can go racing on up this way. So it is July at the moment. August is about to turn up. August is the month for starting our harvest, I believe. We can have a look in here. Um, canola. See, we don't actually have it ready to go yet. Canola will be here. That's when that one's going to start. Oat also next month as well. Corn not for another couple of months. So we got canola and oat will both be harvested next month. And so we're going to have a busy month. So it's the last month in August. Sleep. Yeah, let's just sleep right through. Um, a new combine would be nice. But I kind of think I'd... I'm wondering whether or not we should get a new tractor. Instead of spending the money on repairing the tractor that we've got, maybe we'd be better off. See, we get 16 euros per month at the moment on loan interest, which is fine. That's, that's a, a minimal amount. It's a very, very minimal amount. And I've got... That one's almost full at 1390. It will tell us that it's full in just a second. Well, in, in another hour. But we've got that field ready to go and that field up there ready to go. The pigs now, if we're going to have a look at them, we don't need to buy any more pigs. We've got 90 pigs. We've actually reached our target. At long last, we have the pigs. So you can see right there, <clears throat> they were born in the night. They are zero months. And these up here are 100% health with reproduction on zero. So they're the ones that gave birth. So we do this, we get 4,162 after the transport fee is taken out. So I'm going to sell those. Yep. We now get from our pigs every single month 4,162 euros. Which is actually really, really awesome. So we're, that is now a guaranteed income every month. Exactly. It's always the same. It is always the same amount. I bring this over here. We've got 2,000 liters of food in here. So we are pretty close to having to buy some more, but that will keep us going for just a little bit longer. Right in there. So we've now got 3,000 liters. That's another possibly will last us until August. Uh, sorry, not August. Uh, uh, September, October, maybe. And then we get a little bit more out of there. Obviously, we're eating the food a lot faster than we can produce it. We have to keep that in mind. The oats in here are going to be taken straight to the mill. So I've got 24,000. The tractor, the, the John Deere tractor at the moment. 
believe I'm considering selling this one. That one is 11,400. It would be worth a little bit more than that. If we do the repair on it, it will increase its value again. I don't know about painting, because I've been told now since the update that painting, if you do paint stuff, it doesn't necessarily increase it by more than what you get back on it. So I'm a bit reluctant to do any painting. But the repair, yes, we do that. And we get a bit more than 11 grand, maybe 12 grand. So that's putting us up to about 35,000. We do want to keep a good chunk of money back for hired help for doing all the work that we're going to be doing. Uh, sale, yeah, I don't think we'll do that because we don't have anything that can pull it or anything else. So that one's out. What tractor could we get in place of that John Deere if we were to get something different? The short answer to that question is we won't. We don't have any other options that we can go and get at the moment. That's the one that we own right now. That's 105,000 when it's bought new. So there isn't anything that we'd be getting. Um, possibly we could do something like this. This is a beast of a tractor. All right, it starts at 230 horsepower and then goes on upwards, which is pretty cool. And it's still got a 40k speed on it. So the engine setup, it goes all the way up to 360 horsepower. Um, and that puts the price tag up 60 grand. We don't have that kind of money, so that's not going to be an option right now. So what I think that we'll do, even though I really want a new seed... Oh, wait a minute. Uh, right, we've got canola in. After canola comes corn. Oats is in. After oats comes barley. So we've got the oats in the big field, and we need to be able to plant barley. We've got to do two layers of... So it's the oat field that we've got to plant. That's got to be planted. Um, there isn't at the moment a decent seed drill upgrade. Maybe we can find one. But let's just, just do this a minute. Maybe I can find... Because um, there's, lo there's loads of mods that I don't actually have active on this map at the moment. So I will go through and I'll have a look... Um, and see what else we can find. But first of all, we're going to go in here. That one's already done. This one here. See? There. Oh! I thought it was 12... Uh, 7 grand. So I, I don't know why I thought it was 7 grand. It's 4 grand. Right. Value, 12,570. If I do that, 4,000. 16,920. That gave it an additional 400 euros of value on top of the repair work that we did. And we now have 20,000 euros. But we've got a tractor that is up and running. Um, capacity is zero. I need to get some more fuel ordered in. So we'll order in a, a bit of fuel as well. Let's go in here. I'm not ordering 25,000 litres of fuel. Or 10,000. How much is that? Oh, that's 57,000 euros. Good gravy. 5,000... Is expensive. I'm going to order 1,000 litres of fuel. That's 2,300. There. It's all the stuff that we need to be doing, isn't it? Like, there's, there's just little things that we need to be doing here and there. So, I've got a tractor now. That we can go and use. He, he feels a bit more responsive. But actually, this one is the same speed box as that one over there. The reason I was using this one a bit was because that tractor over there um, is a bit louder and also it hooks the trailer up funny. It lifts it up too high, so it doesn't sort of go with it very very nicely. But it's combining that we want to do next. So I want to leave the header there. And then I want this trailer. I'm going to back this one out. And we're going to go and do the oats first, because we can get the oats done, then we can do the baling. And then once we've done all of that, then we can sort of start working on the canola up here. Because the canola doesn't matter if that takes longer, but the oats, we want that done so we can clear the field, and we can get the baling and like everything cleared, and then we can get started on the next crop. Because it's quite important that we get onto that one as fast as possible. Just unfold the combine here a minute. We've got the header there in place. 
I can just hook it on without the trailer bouncing off down across the field. Should be rather good. Right. We are ready to go and start our harvest. So I've got to make sure that I turn off the straw chopper. Because we kind of want the straw from this. This is going to net us a reasonable amount of money. Now, um, I have had uh, the numbers told me about about uh, the different statuses that we've got in here because we didn't plow this field before we planted it and so the plowing gives you a 15% yield loss then we had um, what do we got yield bone fertilize 98% we also didn't roll it and it hasn't been weeded and then uh, so we've got the yield bonus there, you can see, it's 50, 60%. We've got a yield bonus of 60%, which means that there's a potential um, additional 40% bonus that we haven't got because of plowing, rolling, weeds in the field, things like that. So we have actually lost out on potential monies by not doing our various different tasks, but plowing would be the kind of the biggest one. So if we could do some plowing... That would be absolutely great. Let's hair across the field here a minute and get started. So we got our baler over in the shed and we will get that one hooked on and then we'll be able to come along and bale up all of this straw. I think we will try and keep a stack of bales. Um, if we were to do that, like one trailer load, we've got 17,000 euros at the moment. And I'm reasonably confident because we're now no longer buying pigs each month and we are in fact selling pigs each month. Um, we're going to end up getting enough of a profit coming in that we'll be able to get the second pig pen by winter and I've given this a bit of thought and I do think that a second pig pen is the way forward that's what we want to do we don't want to sell the pig pen that we've got and then start over we just want to get another one and we'll start building that one so that we will have to go back and buy pigs each month until we've got that one filled up that won't actually take very long and we, it's, it's not like we haven't done that before. Now, if I just bring that down there so that we spread out that grain a little bit and then we'll whiz on round like this. And excellent. Right, so we've gone around that corner without too many issues. I, Because we don't have any kind of rake or anything like that, we do need to be a little bit careful with the corners so that we don't make too much of a mess. Um, I mean, it shouldn't be too bad. We're doing small bale straw. And I was considering getting like a round baler or something again, uh, as we've done in the past. But I don't think I will at the moment. If we're going to go with a bigger baler, I think that we want to be moving on to a square baler. But I still don't really want to do that at the moment. I just want to stick with what we've got right here. And then we'll, we'll kind of see how that goes a little bit later on. Right, we've come bouncing through the gateway here. It's actually gone reasonably well. The oats that we get off the field, we're not going to be wanting them for anything in particular. So they will go straight to the mill and they can start being processed. By the time winter gets here, the oats should all have been turned into flour. We'll have to keep an eye on it and keep moving the pallets out of the way so that we've got them all there piled up. And then we'll be able to sell the entire lot. It's December or January, I can't remember now. Um, we'll sell everything that we've got there and then once we've sold all of that lot, then we are kind of ready for the next bit. Now I'm just going to go there a second because reasons... I remember now, I got changed. I put on a warm jacket for the previous winter and it would appear that I have forgotten to change out of my warm jacket and gloves and everything for the summer. So I've been probably a little bit toasty warm for the summer. That might be something that we need to go and work on. Not, not just at the moment. 
It's a shame you can't just take your coat off in the cab, but no, we can't do that. So we will have to go and do that. We'll have to take our coat off because it's going to be, it's a little bit hot for running around in um, a, a coat and trousers like that for, for the summer. I mean, yeah, usually if you're out on a farm, you'd be wearing trousers of some kind rather than shorts. Um, not always does depend on the job you're doing. If you want to be running through a grain field, then yes, trousers are an excellent idea. If you're doing anything to do with um, throwing around a large quantity of small bales, then trousers are an absolutely brilliant idea, because if you don't have trousers on, you will rip your legs and, well, your knees in particular, you will rip them to shreds. Trust me on this, I speak, I, I have the voice of experience on that one. The edge of a bale gets a bit spiky. You, you just just the little bits of grass and so on that stick out. Although you know today we'd be doing straw, so that's often worse. Um, the just little little spiky bits that stick out. You, you know what it's like when you've got um, quite long grass in your garden. For those of you not farmers, and you pick that, you you've just cut like a, a few handfuls of quite long grass. You ever tried putting that into like a bin bag or something and it, it pierces the side of the, the plastic uh, rubbish bag? Um, it's like that. So you, you've got lots of those. Now, when you pick up a small bale and you go to move it, you pick it up by the two strings, one hand on each string. And after picking it up in the air, you need to move it. To move it, you generally put your knee against it and then use your leg to help you propel it forwards. You don't just use the strength of your arm. Do you use your whole body when you're doing it? It conserves energy a huge amount. If you're trying to throw them around with just your arms, you end up with arms like noodles fairly quickly. Um, it doesn't work very well. It is a whole body exercise. So you're using your knee. And that generally means that if you're wearing a pair of shorts, your knee is getting scraped by the material that the bale is made from. Now, it might feel soft just when you go to pick it up. Um, you, you feel it with your hand, it might feel a little bit soft, and yeah, it usually is. But when you push your bare knee against it um, a, a couple thousand times, um, it's less soft. It's a little bit more spiky. It's, it's, it's not quite so pleasant feeling against the skin. And you can end up rubbing your knees absolutely raw on bales. It doesn't matter what you do. And when I say a few thousand, not exaggerating. A lorry and trailer, I think we were looking at around 1,200 bales to load that one up. I think. I mean, I might be wrong, it might have been slightly less than a thousand, but I don't think it was as low as that. I think it was closer to, like, 1,200 bales. Um, we could load three or four lorry loads in a day, and then you've got to take them back and you've got to unload them again. So you, it wouldn't be unusual if you are working on doing small bales. It wouldn't be an unusual thing or a particular stretch to say that you're handling four to five thousand bales in a day. Now, you wouldn't necessarily handle all of that. You, you, well, you wouldn't handle all of those yourself because uh, it's a team effort. There's, there's several of you who are working away on it. I'm going slowly because the tank's just about full. I'm going to fill it right up before I stop. Um, so it, it is actually a team effort. There are several of you there that are working away on this job. But you've also got to remember that uh, you, you would actually do several of them yourself. Now, do I want to use this one? Have I got any reason for... I don't need to use this one at the moment. We'll leave that one where he is. And we will go to this one. We'll unhitch that trailer and we'll leave that one there. And we'll go and get this trailer on. And then that's ready to run up to the mill. Let's hook you on. 18,500 potential litres can go in here. Um, so, yeah, I would say that an individual person through the course of a day... I mean, 
if you've got two people working on loading a load, you've got one person packing them and one person passing them. So you handle every bale. It definitely... I, it's very difficult to come up with a number. Right? It is difficult. It's been a long time since I've actually done it. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to come up with like a realistic number. But I would say that personally picking up and handling 4,000 bales in a single day isn't an exaggeration i would say that's probably reasonably accurate now it might be a bit less than that it might only be three thousand but still you know a bale of hay you're looking at 20 to 25 kilos a uh, straw depending on how the person on the baler is being um they could be about the same usually they're less if the person on the baler is trying to keep the bales about the same as your bales of hay then he makes them a lot longer and yeah I, I don't like that I would prefer to handle more lighter bales than I would fewer heavy bales it's a lot lot less tiring to handle a few uh, uh, to handle more lighter bales it, it, it really is trust me on this I've, I've, I've done this a few times um, so you're looking at 20 to 25 kilos for a bale. That's not an unusual... Now, sometimes people do bale lighter and they will bale smaller bales purely because it's easier to throw around lighter bales. And I know plenty of farmers who deliberately will make much smaller bales so their bales are actually around 15 kilos each rather than 20 to 25 kilos each but then there are others who like to pack them in as tight as they can just because well they don't spend so much time handling them or they're just awkward um you don't need 25 kilo bales but i've done enough hand handling of small bales to know that you get plenty of them anyway even though you don't need them. so if you see an average of 20 kilos you pick up and throw a 20 kilo weight three to four thousand times in a day that is the kind of work that you're doing when you're um working with small bales right it is a very very tiring thing to do so we go back to what i was saying at the beginning the way you pick them up you don't pick up these bales and then just, you know, pick them up with your arms and not have your body touching them and then just throw them with your arms. You're not going to pick up 20 kilos and physically throw it. 3,000, I mean, I've been conservative with the 3,000, I believe. If, if I've got these numbers wrong, get, let me know in the comment section because I know that some of you um, are still working with small bales on a regular basis, so you've probably got better... Uh, a more accurate um, list of figures than I do. It's been a long time since I've done it. Um, but you wouldn't be physically, you wouldn't pick the bale up and hold it out from your body and then just throw it with your arms. You just wouldn't do it. Time you get to 200 bales, you'd be absolutely exhausted. You wouldn't be able to do anymore. You keep the bale in tight to your body, you use your whole body to help move that bale. And you work as conservative, you, you just figure out ways as you go along to try to spread the load and spread the effort that it takes to move each one and you try to distribute that effort between all of the muscles of your body rather than just limiting it to a few and because that conserves your energy a lot more and you're able to last a lot longer you're able to go a lot longer doing that kind of work and it's kind of, it, it is quite important because you don't want to get part way through the day and then be utterly useless to everybody around you. You need to be able to keep going all day. And when I say all day, um, I, I don't just mean like nine to five. Um, if, if you're on hay and chucking them around, you'd probably be doing stuff with machinery until about nine o'clock. So you're starting at uh, seven, half past seven. Um, and then you will work until dark. So, say 9 o'clock, you start throwing around the small bales. You'll stop for a break mid-morning. You'll stop for lunch. You'll stop for a break early afternoon, late afternoon, tea time. And then you'll probably just go until... Well, you may have another uh, a break. With each break that you stop, if you're stopping for like a cup of coffee or something like that, uh, just, just some kind of drink, you would normally stop for 10 to 15 minutes. That, that would be what I would expect, 10 to 15 
um, maybe a little bit more, depending on who you're working for. Um, lunch break would be uh, 30 minutes. And then uh, tea time, that would also be 30 minutes. Depending on you know, some, some places I've been, you, you, we've actually stopped longer than that. We've actually stopped for like an hour. Um, and it's important that, I mean, a lot of farmers will expect you to have plenty of breaks. If you're doing that kind of physical work, they will give you plenty of breaks and plenty of um, liquids, plenty of small snacks. So you, you, you have several small snacks through the day as you're going. Again, it depends, everything's sort of situational. I can't say this is how it always is. This is how it's been for the places that I've worked where we've done a lot of small bales. So, um, you know, if you're doing a lot of hard physical work like that, if you've got a farmer, if you've got a farmer, if you've got a boss that looks after you properly, then that's excellent. That's absolutely brilliant because it really does make a difference. It makes a huge difference to what you can do during the day. And so if they're feeding you and keeping your energy up, then you, you really can go all day. And then you go until it gets dark, which is um, August. If you're doing straw, I mean, June, July. So you're talking the longest days. You're looking at um, everything getting dark, like 10 o'clock. And I stayed work until then doing uh, throwing around bales of hay. And you work till 10 o'clock and then you end up getting off to sleep and trust me you sleep very quickly it doesn't take very long before you fall asleep and then you get to go back and you can do it all again the next day you keep going and going and going and you do that for about two weeks and after about two weeks when you've moved something in the region of 25 to 30 thousand bales then you're ready for a really good night's sleep Hopefully, going to be able to empty out this combine once he comes back up over this way. So I'm going to drive up here, spin round tight, and then we'll see if we can empty this bad boy out. How far up he's going to go, though, so... Okay, that was just bad reversing on my part there, but... Let's see, it. Let's see how it copes with it. It's going to be a little while before it gets back up over here. He's coming whizzing all the way up over here. I, I don't know how far he's going to go. Ooh, no, it's not too bad. I thought he was going to maybe get as far as the tractor, but he hasn't. So he's going to go out that way. And we'll run down over here. And hopefully the spout will come out and we can start filling before he gets too far along. There we go. Right, now, if if you're paying attention to what you're doing, you want to try and drive on the street. Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.